Why does a personal trainer need to know about muscles? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching. And in today's video, we're gonna explore about muscles in relation to your level two and level three anatomy exam. In particular, why it's important to learn the muscles and why you need to know it as a fitness professional. So whether you're a gym instructor, exercise to music instructor, Pilates, yoga, or personal trainer, all of these different types of instructors each need to know about the muscles and it's really important for that. But we're going to explore the reasons why you need to know that today. Alongside that, there are going to be three mock questions to help you test your knowledge on today's content. All you need to do is if you're on our blog, scroll down to the bottom and you'll find them there. Or if you're not on our blog yet, click the link that is with this video and it will take you straight there. Also alongside that, make sure you hit subscribe to our YouTube channel to get many more videos just like this about anatomy, about becoming a personal trainer and what it takes to be an outstanding fitness professional. So let's find out why it's really important. Now to start off with, each exam will require a basic knowledge of muscles at the very least. Now for level three, you need to know about 50 different muscles and at level two, you need to know 37 different muscles. But the detail of those muscles means that you actually need to know the name of the muscle, so what the name is and where it's located. You need to know the origin and the insertion of the, those muscles. And you also need to know what joint is crossed and what action occurs when the muscle contracts. Now, that might sound like a lot of information, but it's really just about knowing that muscle inside and out, knowing it in as much detail as you can so that the information you have about it is useful. And that's why we learn muscles as part of becoming a fitness professional. It's not just so that you have lots of things to have to go and remember and actually like lots of detail. Instead, it's about the knowledge that it allows you to go on and use. Now, in particular, part of this is about how you work with clients. So as a personal trainer or any other type of fitness professional, the main thing we do is work with bodies and exercises and movement. And as a result, each movement we do in our bodies require an action or a contraction within a muscle. If we understand the exercise works specific muscles, then as a result, we can now understand how that muscle interacts with that exercise. So if our client's goal is to change shape in relation to their chest or their arms or their upper body, you now know particular areas that you want to focus on and therefore you understand what muscles need to be targeted in that session, for example. And then as a result, you can now find out what exercises will target those muscles just by understanding what muscles create which joint action. This is also the case if you have a come across a brand new exercise that you've never seen before or never been taught, you can actually look at it, understand the joint action that's taking place, and then work out which muscle is being used. And this is really beneficial because you actually start to find out if it's something that is effective and efficient for your client. It might be something that's not appropriate for them at all. We also, the other main reason why we need to know about muscles is because of our client's posture, alignment and correction. As soon as we start working with clients as fitness professionals, we learn to observe and we learn to start looking at what's going on in our client's bodies. And the moment we start to see these changes and what's happening, we actually start to understand the muscles and how they all layer in, in really intricate forms throughout the body. So each muscle has its own role and its own responsibility in the body. Now, as if you notice your client is slightly out of alignment on their squat or that they've got different compensations on their press up, you can use that knowledge and your knowledge of muscles to be able to help correct them, but also help improve their performance for future sessions that they may be doing with you as well. So it's actually not just about do I know the muscle, do I know the exercises, but also can I improve my client's performance and how they're working with those. So it's really important to have all of that information together. But it also means you can understand exercises and stretches in relation to your client's pains or niggles or discomforts. So often a client, when they work with us, will turn around and say, oh, I can just feel this here a little bit, or I could got this little niggle on my knee, or my shoulder's playing up today. And actually you can start looking at the movement that they're doing and understanding what's um, causing those pains, what types of actions are maybe causing the pain. And then you're able to actually understand maybe it's something to do with this particular muscle and it allows you to build up clues all because of your basic understanding about muscles. So muscles is not part of your anatomy exam just to catch you out or there's something, some long words to make you learn. 
It's there so you have a really good foundational understanding and that foundational understanding will become the backbone to you being able to be a fantastic fitness professional, to be able to really observe your client, correct your client and prescribe the right type of exercises for them based on their goal, their needs and their wants. And actually when you're looking at it as a fitness professional and looking at the overall goal and outcome, it will make a lot more sense when you're learning the muscles compared to if you just try and remember every single word. So my big tip for you if you're trying to learn muscles right now is to take your time in learning it. Yes, there's lots of information, but take your time, break it down, focus on one muscle at a time, and then relate it to something you're going to be doing with clients. So if you're a Pilates instructor, relate it to that Pilates move. If you're working in a gym environment, relate it to the exercises you're going to do with your client. And it will help you understand it further. And this is one of five steps that we have that helps you learn and remember the muscles, including the origin and insertion of those muscles, ready for your exam. And if you want to find out more about those five steps, click the link that is uh, on this video and that will take you to another video I've done all about the five steps to remember origins and insertions. Outside of that, I'd love to hear what your big takeaway has been today. Drop a little comment below and let me know what your big takeaway has been. What have you learned from today's video? And then go away and start learning those muscles ready for your upcoming exam and working with clients. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.